<laughs> camera on you. And for those of you who are with us now, we are going to go live all week during the Super Bowl. We'll be starting a little later on most days because of this and because of the West Coast. But Whittingham, as Mike Ryan makes his way to the chair, what can you tell us about Sad, Sad Radio Row? Of course, that's how we He's start. Muted. That's how we start <laughs> our Super Bowl coverage with Chris Whittingham <laughs> <laughs> muted. Why are you delighting in that? <laughs> it ruins the show. It puts Dan in a bad mood. I, 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 mean. had, I, had, I have two levels of layers, so you you can not hear one guy on Sirius XM murmuring in the background because that is the only sound that is emanating from this radio row at the moment. I can hear the uh, sadness. There are sets you hear being that? Put together. I love it. There's a. There, there, there's a morning show from Baltimore that is on the air, and I think that's it. Is it Nasty Nestor? He's there every year, and he's usually surrounded by ass crack of people bent over uh, near him. I'll be out there tomorrow, now, don't the, worry. The, the one thing, guys, I'm going to whisper <laughs> even though they're not here, the one thing that I think could make for some interesting tension over the course of the week is that directly next to us is Outkick. Outkick 360 <laughs> oh, is next wow. to us. Oh, wow. So yes. I think a nationally syndicated radio stations. Although I heard the guy say that there's only six radio stations that are carrying Outkick programming. But I feel like uh, when, when I saw the, the table lay, I was like, this is an interesting tension that maybe we can All right. escalate. At Levitard Show, if you have any suggestions as to how we can soil <laughs> Outkick's coverage, please. Turned into Jim Nance there for a second. <laughs> was, all of a sudden, it was at the <laughs> master. <laughs> Speaking of which, by the way, I wanted to ask Dugats about this because I couldn't believe what it is that I was watching this weekend when Jordan Spieth at Pebble Beach. It was I, the most I, insane I, thing I've ever that? seen. Crazy. Like, what is that? Take How a is, penalty, dude. So, Jordan, for those who don't know, Jordan Spieth is basically taking a shot with his foot like he seems to be scared that he's going to fall off a cliff. Inches away from a 70-foot cliff. What that is is Pebble Certain Beach. Death. No, that is Pebble Beach. It is Pebble Beach. You go there and occasionally, if you don't hit the ball straight, you're going to have a shot like that. Now, Spieth complained about it the entire time. It was funny. He hit the shot and ran straight backwards because he was afraid of falling off the cliff. He didn't have to take the shot. And he's complaining about the shot that he chose to take uh, since he took the shot. Like, don't take it. But Pick there, up, but, drop, and then shoot from okay, there. But I would it's say, not worth it. Look, Life on the line for golf. I know that golf takes its rules seriously. And I know that I don't care enough about golf to be the guy who shows up and says, let me change the rules. But if Jordan Spieth had fallen to his death yeah. because he was taking a shot inches away from a cliff. The amount of stupidity involved with ju just golf saying follow the rules and take the shot, I'd argue perhaps you shouldn't take get a penalty. Uh, perhaps you should the rules shouldn't force someone to take a penalty if they're inches from a cliff. I'm willing to make that a one a, a, a little bit of a loophole that we all say nobody wants to see a golfer fall to his death. That story would have ruined our Super Bowl week. Yeah. Bowel. Mm -hmm. And only that. Super Bowel week is what we are doing. Now, it's not surprising that we began our Super Bowl coverage not being able bowel. to hear uh, Whittingham. It's also not surprising that I don't have, after much work by La Esquina de Chumeria, a way to see Mike Ryan in the chair. I hope the audience has the ability to see Mike Ryan in oh, the man. chair as he's being cut. I hope we have the ability to go to him and see. Look at this. Look at the sadness oh, on his face there. Uh, initially, this was not sponsored. This looks like something that Mike now Ryan. Now it's sponsored, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Sheets and giggles. They always come in when they when we need them, don't they? Mm -hmm. Well, what are they doing here? Because there's a way for people to save money. On oh wow, this. it's happening right Ooh, here. I think he's like happening. pre. Oh right boy, oh, my god. god, it's happening Let me right now. He's going straight for it. Ooh. Oh my god, I can give Jesus. the I can give the good oh, info I'm after. So let's nervous. let's just focus on no, this. No, give the info now. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, for everybody that wants a fifty dollar gift card. Hold on, hold okay. on, Lucas. Stop. Stop right there. Tell the barber. Tell him to stop. Tell him to stop. I want to just see this for we a little while. want to sit in it. I want to sit in this. Now tell the people what it is because this is a sponsor. <laughs> he Mike's is like, so disgusted now? right Lucas, now. Lucas, you oh need to God. stop for a second. I, can <laughs> you, Lucas, comb that over. Comb, <laughs> comb, yeah, comb over. that over. Comb yes. that over. Yeah, comb yeah. that over so that we can yeah. see. Make a monito with it. <laughs> oh, oh, that's wow. perfect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't so look like Jimbo. I mean, <laughs> you 
<laughs> Go ahead, Chris. Tell oh, the no. people about well, what, what it is that Sheets and Giggles is sponsoring they have, here. They promised, uh, I think over a month ago, that if Mike Ryan ever did this, they would give a $50 gift card to anybody that wants it. And they are offering that now. If you would like to claim your $50 gift card, go to sheetsgiggles.com slash shave. You got to put in your email address, your name, and then they will send you your $50 coupon. Make sure it's not Sheets and Giggles. Sheetsgiggles.com slash shave if you want to claim your $50 gift card. This is super exciting. Mike, you look great. Mike Ryan, let's get an update here uh, at your misery, at your unhappiness. Look at how happy your barber is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you enjoying this? <laughs> yeah. Any more pauses? Throughout this experience, we're gonna have, or we just revel and make memes, or are we just gonna get through with this. You should shave the U in the back of your head. You should. No more ideas from Jess, please. Just no more ideas, period. And why does it mean just here to laugh at me? <laughs> he, he flew in. What I didn't gig. even know Juju was in town. <laughs> what a gig. <laughs> I mean, I mean, did fly in on Metal Arts expense just to see how it is that this looks. Uh, maximum shame involved. I like that we have new microphones. This looks bad. Right. <laughs> yes, it does. It looks, this looks somehow worse. Yeah, it looks bad now, Mike. I'm telling you, when you go full bald after this, you're going to look great. I'm t I could see it. I could see you looking great. You get, listen, you're a handsome man. You have a very Brian Cardinal shaped head. I didn't know my head was that shape. Yeah, me Cards. <laughs> it's not it's not perfectly circular. You did not know that your skull was a little bit like a misshapen egg, like an egg with a dent in the side of it. Man. The custodian. <laughs> I was waiting for it. The custodian. Uh, Stugatz went cards there. He forgot He forgot the nickname, cards, for some reason. <laughs> Whittingham, do you have any ideas on what we can be doing? Can you just shout things during Outkicks? Can you just shout things into your microphone during their show so it gets on air? Random uh, things like, are you, are, are you capable of shouting he's a shit stain? Um... I, I don't know if I would shout that. Maybe what we can do is kind of very aggressively shout things about issues of the day that might be in direct contrast <laughs> to the point of view espoused by that outlet. I also might I might be able to be heard right now. I think it's on Sirius XM Mad Dog Radio. Adam Shine is currently on the Ah, uh, so Shine on I Sports. Maybe shouting that, that, that shine. can be heard over there as well. Speaking of Shine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite a shine though, because uh, you right now you don't look bald, bald like fine bomb on top. You look more military grade crew cut on the top. It doesn't look bald, bald. There's still <laughs> thank you. There's a lot of hair. <laughs> There's up there, still I mean. some stubble there. I'm not bald enough for you yet. <laughs> nope. He's got to go through with a sh like a razor next, right? Yeah, that's next. That's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's next. Sure. Do you have a razor? <laughs> Be better. Oh, God. oh, there it is. Yes. yes. All right, oh, we're wow. good. All right. No, Lucas, take your time. Not yet. We'll, we'll uh, milk this. We'll allow this to marinate uh, for a second. <laughs> and we have, as part of our Super Bowl coverage this week, uh, we're a little disappointed. We were all headed out there, but uh, the virus nuked our plans. But we do have all the metal larkers coming into town, except for Howard Bryant, who tore both his hamstrings in, <laughs> way <laughs> in, in ways that we have to get to horrible. the... It does sound... Uh, put it on the poll, Guillermo, at level show does it sound really truly epically horrible to tear both of your hamstrings how does one why do is that? juju laughing so hard at the idea of tearing both of your hamstrings <laughs> I mean, it's pretty funny it's the funniest thing i've ever heard in my life <laughs> <laughs> a couple of hammies i mean <laughs> cutting it up <laughs> Mike, how do you feel right now about uh, give us some give us some in-game analysis as you're wired for sound on how you feel right now about how you look? Uh, deep regret. There is a live feed, so I am able to chart my progress here. And I didn't know I had that bump at the top of my head. It's just never something that occurred to me. Under bright TV lights, it's. Um, all of this is very regrettable, especially considering generally I was right about what I was trying to say. <laughs> Your face looks fatter, too. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, yeah. oh, oh no. no. I'm so it's, sorry. I'm just it saying because oh, with the God. curvature. Truth hurts. Salt in the room, I'm also man. presently being choked by a sheets and giggles. <laughs> oh. That is like cutting off my circulation because we had to shoehorn this sponsor yeah. in, which was the only way that I would ever do something like this and mm -hmm. why am i the only one that has integrity on this show there are so many 
unfinished bets. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So many. Wait a minute. What, Roy? I have integrity. I actually finished my bets. Yeah, you're you're the lone exception. Thank you. Dan should be naked next to me right now as Prince Fielder. (laughs) My head is also bald, so I stand with you, Mike. Sheetsgiggles.com slash shave if you want to claim your $50 gift card for Mike doing it. How about Mike doing this? Good job, Mike. I mean, we're not done yet. Yes. But we are proud of you, Mike. We are proud of you. You look great. What are we celebrating? I mean, uh, paying t- off the bet t- three t- months t- later. I just, I'm having fun. This is I'm having fun. You guys having fun? This is great. Dugans is one to talk. He hasn't paid a bet. He's got one outstanding from five years, and he's got like a from five years can ago. Can I enjoy the moment? I finally didn't lose a bet around here. I mean, can I enjoy it? Uh, yeah. Mike looks good. He does not look good. Oh, he looks fine. He does not, Don't do that. He does. I mean, he doesn't look good. Like, I mean, you can tell all the lies you want around here, but you've never told a bigger one than Mike looks good right now. Mike's looking into his future, what he looks like if he had lost his hair in the worst possible way and then subsequently also had the style of Paul Feinbaum. I've told bigger ones. Put it on the poll, Guillermo, at Lebitard Show. Are you surprised that Paul Feinbaum hasn't gone totally bald? Because the cul-de-sac is not working for anybody. Does anyone rock the cul-de-sac well? Somebody. Give me somebody in the history Mm. of vanity and appearances that has rocked the uh, Mm. cul-de-sac in a way that's attractive. Sherman Hills, me. Uncle Phil, uh, Carl Winslow, uh, salute to Sherman Hemsley, uh, salute to... uh, all the, the cul-de-sac big brothers out there, I see y'all. <laughs> Thank you, Juju. There's a lot more hot bald guys, though. I spent my weekend watching Stanley Tucci searching for Italy. Now there's a hot bald guy. Really? And not. a short king. Ah, short king, yes. Only 5'8". I did not have Stanley Tucci as hot guy. Hot. Oh, old. my God, Dan. I did not know. Is he a sex symbol? It's- Absolutely. He is? I don't know for other people, but for me, yes. Great Jeff, show. Jeff Van Gundy also pulls it off. Yes. <laughs> These aren't great comparisons for me. <laughs> this is not. No kid when they're 14 is like, yeah, I'm really going for Tucci. Uh, would you mind, uh, Lucas, would you mind spinning him around? I don't think it's a natural uh, barber's chair that has that kind, but I want to see it from the back. <laughs> oh, oh, glory. <laughs> oh, no. Glory. Less good from this angle. All right, le- leave it there for a second, please. Hold on, keep him, keep him there for a second, please. Just, I- I'd like to uh, enjoy the sign. The sign. Mike had a mullet. <laughs> Man, this is not great if you're only doing this as audio. <laughs> I look like Danny DeVito and twins. Did anyone say yes. Fred Dreyer, Brother Hunter? He Fred rocked Dreyer. a wow. cul-de-sac. Oh, was he a handsome devil, that guy? Oh, man, what a great show, Hunter. Ted Danson. Yes. Is Ted Danson? I think of no. him as a full head of hair. Ted I don't Danson think of Ted Hanson. Yeah. I don't think of Ted Danson. Yeah, My good friend head. Ted Danson has a full head of hair. I don't think that's real. Wow. Yeah. Wait a minute. What are you doing Whoa. there? What are you accusing Ted Danson of? Dig deeper. You're thinking of Larry David. You can, Oh, okay. Good. Cheryl's ex-husband. But Larry David doesn't rock that well. I think he does. I think he does. He pulls it off. He Give looks it a great. Look-see. That's his look. Yeah. I think Larry David looks great. He gives off maximum curmudgeon. He doesn't give off stylish and sexy, but fair enough. You guys are telling me that Larry David is sexy, that he is, uh, that he's, pu- he's pulling off the cul-de-sac hair in a way that is attractive. <laughs> Billy, might be Lou. Billy might be onto something here with Ted Danson. Yeah. A little research done here. Yeah. Since when did Ted Danson lose all his hair? Uh, I think of Ted Danson, and this is as recently as The Good Place, as having a full head of hair. Mm -hmm. I don't think of Ted Danson as having the Larry David cul-de-sac. That's why I said dig deeper. See this beach photo I'm looking at? Yep. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Audio medium, Chris. Can you you explain it to us? He's bald. (laughs) Good description. This profile is quite breathtaking. Tell me, Amin. Tell me your vantage point. Give us uh, give us as much detail as you can what you're presently <laughs> witnessing. So, as Juju pointed out, Mike has a quite luxurious mullet, but he did one of those shaved sides, so his hair is kind of very close cropped on the temples and behind the ear while this cascade of hair just spills down. But now that the top of his head is bald, it just looks like it's emanating from a ring around his head. It's... It's like it's like Saturn. 
Basically, and the hair is his rings. So he basically looks like Al Iafredi from the Washington Capitals. <laughs> Iafredi. Yes. Roy's every landmark is ho- hockey specific. It's the strangest thing in our universe. <laughs> but it's perfect. If Mike turned his hair around 180 degrees, it would be like a veil, like a belly dancer. <laughs> Stugatz, I failed to ask Charles McDonald of something that is being reported because I don't know now what is true and what is not true in the realm of NFL reporting. But Jeremy Fowler saying the Packers have no, quote, hard plans, end quote, to trade Aaron Rodgers. (laughs) That was a little surprising to me. Why? Because you thought that was the deal, well, right? I just thought that the whole mess that was made last year wasn't something that was going to be repairable. I think if you agree with your quarterback on we'll take it year by year and also we're going to make some promises to you in private that perhaps you will get your freedom in a year. I thought it was if, – if we had to bet this – When the mess was going on, will Aaron Rodgers be there after a year after making this bet? You would have bet that he would stay there based on where we were when the noises were being made? I would bet that the Packers still want Aaron Rodgers to be their quarterback because Aaron Rodgers is still one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, if not the best quarterback in the NFL. But I think the way I remember it is Aaron has to dictate those terms. If he goes to them and says, hey, I want out of here, they're going to trade him. I thought it was a foregone conclusion that they would work with him after a year to make it so that he didn't have to be there anymore. And I don't know what the qualifier of hard plans mean. Like, what does that mean? That phrase, no hard plans. It's a fluid situation, Dan. It's constantly changing. It's really, it's up to Aaron Rodgers is what they're telling you, I think. And it is up to Aaron Rodgers. I wouldn't leave if I'm Aaron Rodgers, but we'll see what happens. Dan, we have an update. Yep. Spectacles have been adorned. It's definitely needed. Oh, the glasses are a great look. Is he trying to go for a Tucci? I I feel like Mike needs a rolled up newspaper under his arm and to walk into the room and be very disappointed in his child. Mike, Mike, like Kimbo Slice. (laughs) R.I.P. Well, wait, Kimbo, I think you can make the argument that Kimbo rocked the cul-de-sac well sure better did. than any of the other people that we're mentioning here. Well, he was more menacing with it, yeah. Fred Dreyer? <laughs> <laughs> I love that you are referencing one of my father's favorite detective shows from the 80s, former Rams football player Fred Dreyer. As Hunter. As Hunter. I, I, I just love that you are descending more and more every day into, you're, you're falling like Jordan Spieth off a cliff into old age, with embracing just terrible tel- network television and doing a variety of things that are appalling to me that you age a decade for every week we're doing this. Speaking of aging a decade for every week, doesn't isn't Terry Bradshaw the most famous cold oh, decide Good one. Oh, good Excellent. Four Super Bowls. That's yeah. the good Hulk company Hulk, yep. well, Oh, oh Hulk. the Hulkster. Hulk, yeah, that's yeah. 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 Did Terry Bradshaw rock it well or did he just... Ha- wow. Jessica with a firm yes because she's just stealer. Bias. She's stealer bias. She has a thing for grandparents is what I'm learning yeah, today. Like yeah. it's odd. Now, Dan, the only Tuji's not a grandparent, but go on. He could be a grandparent. Dan, I, I wanna, I wanna update you again. Mike's not lying about the bump in his head here. It looks kind of like a ski slope, not like the black diamond, but more like a bunny slope. <laughs> Mike, how are you? You don't think we have this by now? I'm just. No, I, I, I don't seems know. Seems like it's pretty done. I don't know if people are getting the full effect here. Also, your hair. As you know, when you shave, you got the stubble. You can see where the hair actually grows from. You have a really weird sloping thing coming down on the left side right there. Jesus. Like, the, I don't know if it's too far up or the right side is too far back. But when your hair grows back, you're going to have a real crooked hair along, it looks like. Laying it on thick. I think it's turning into flame mic. I guess we about to flame mic <laughs> I want to ask I want to ask, uh, ask Juju and Amin a question because every time I see that couch out there, <laughs> such a great audio compliment the the buzzer. 
Every time I see that couch out there, it makes me sad because it's the one thing that we asked ESPN for while we were down here. <laughs> hey, can you guys get us a place so when Ice Cube comes down here, he doesn't have to stand around waiting for things? And they brought us that couch, which I can't believe costs over $40. Tell me how uncomfortable that couch you're sitting on is. Dano, I can confirm this couch is harder than the motherfucker. <laughs> Thank you, Choo Choo. I appreciate it. It is. It's such a bad couch. Like one time we asked them for a microphone that took too long to get here. And we asked them for a place to ice cube to sit. He's about to bounce a ball off of it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's such a shitty couch. It bounced, it bounced right back to him. Right back to him. <laughs> unbelievable. My, my God. <laughs> Oh my God! He's judging us the way Feinbaum would if Feinbaum were here. But he looks closer to Jeff Van Gundy. We agree, right? He does. He, does. he looks a yeah, lot yeah, like Jeff Van Gundy. Right. You're absolutely JVG. right. JVG. Yeah. Yeah. No, wow. <laughs> Can we get Alonzo Mourning down here? <laughs> or the guy from Ghost in the subway? Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's a great call, Roy. <laughs> Definite Queen of Heart, Hearts vibes here. <laughs> Stugatz, I want to ask you and Amin of one of my favorite back and forth beefs that we have had in sports uh, recently where at Mama Durant replying to ESPN, NBA, and Stephen A. Smith, you're at it again with your limited thinking, negative narrative baiting comments. When will you show up better? More importantly, when will we grow tired of this foolishness? <laughs> Because one of the things Stephen A. is saying, Stugatz, not unlike you and the Kevin Durant personal record book, one of the things that he is saying is that Kevin Durant is running the risk of being remembered as the guy who left Steph Curry and did this with Kyrie Irving as opposed to the way that I think he'll be remembered, which is one of the best ever, period, not comma. Right. One of the best ever, not with a comma, left here, left there, just one of the best that we have ever seen. And Stephen A. Smith is undercutting him by saying that many people are going to look at Kevin Durant for leaving Stephen uh, for leaving Steph Curry which is funny to me given that you complain when he joins Steph Curry you complain when he leaves Steph Curry you complain you complain and well, I started complaining when he left Russell Westbrook. I thought that was his first bad decision. I, I happen to agree with Stephen A. Like the optics on him leaving Golden State, and if the Warriors go to win an NBA championship this year without Kevin Durant, and they do it with Andrew Wiggins, okay, and Clay Thompson, who's played you know half the season, and the Nets don't even make it, and they've lost eight straight now. They don't make it to the NBA Finals. It's going to be a bad look for KD. It just is. Like, I agree with Stephen A. in terms of how we're going to remember Kevin Durant. I think Kevin Durant's way too sensitive to what people have to say about him. I, I don't think that it's going to be an echoing thing on how we remember X, Y, Z. You might think it now because you're prisoner of the moment. I don't think it's going to be something. He won his championships. No, I know he did. And you criticized him for winning those championships that way, but he won those championships, and since then we've been talking about him pretty universally as, oh shit, he just passed LeBron as the best player in the league, or oh shit, right. the greatest scorer I've ever seen possibly as an offensive player. That happened because he went to Golden State, and the whole leaving Russell Westbrook thing is looking pretty good today as the Lakers bench Russell Westbrook in overtime and he's an unmitigated nightmare in the Lakers. Uh like that is that Dan, is something just, that's looking pretty good leaving Russell Westbrook. Just last year though, when he had that monster game and they lost and didn't make it to the NBA finals, we said that did more for Kevin Durant than him actually playing with the Golden State Warriors because you saw for a second what it would look like if Kevin Durant was the absolute number 1 on a team that he played for, and he's phenomenal. We all know how talented Kevin Durant is, but he's not going to be in that discussion with Jordan and LeBron James 25 years from now. He's not going to be in that discussion. He'll never be in that discussion. Dan. Wh who's going to be, Stugatz? I mean, it's going to be Kevin. It's going to be LeBron James. It's going to be Michael Jordan. Magic Johnson will probably no, still be in that conversation. Yes, Bill I mean, Russell for some people. I mean, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, maybe Giannis, I mean, Kobe. <laughs> Solomon Hill? Solly. Dan, Dan, I think one of the big issues that Durant has is that Stephen A. isn't actually even owning this take. He's saying, I'm not saying this. I'm saying that's what people are going to say, which kind of undermines 
Stephen A's influence as a driver of conversation. Are you saying it or are you not saying it? He's kind of, you know, copping out a little bit. I do want to know what Jeff Van Gundy has to say about this, though. Jeff Coach, Van, what do you think? What do you think, Coach? How are you, uh, how are you <laughs> feeling? Is that me? Can you yeah, give him? A- that's me. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's you. Yes. Or, or Stanley Tucci, if you prefer, or whoever it is that you'd rather be. Go ahead and give us your analysis on that. <laughs> I just want to go home. <laughs> so here's Kevin Durant Stugat saying, uh, Steve, referring to Stephen A. Smith, since uh, you decided to use ESPN to push your personal agendas, I'm sure your minions will run with this story for you. But if you believe this is what my career is defined by, then you are just a flat out hater. It's going to be hard to box the God in. Hmm. Stephen A. Smith then fires off six straight tweets at the God. Okay, stop the BS. Religiously, I've been on the record calling you the best in the world. This is not about your game, and you know it. We all know you're great, and you're a champion. Well, not all of us know that. Stugat still hasn't (laughs) given him any championships. Nope. We will celebrate that forever when you're done playing. But right now, you are playing. Chapters are still being written. You're measured by what's taking place in the moment. And with all the stuff that's gone on with Kyrie, if you don't win but Steph does, the narrative in a lot of folks' eyes is that you left Steph to join him in Brooklyn, period. I don't wish it. I'm not rooting for it. I'm just calling it like I see it. And also, based on what we've seen folks do for years, none of us get to control the narrative. We just have to call it for what it is. I mean no disrespect to you. And you did. Damn well know it. I'm simply pointing out that you have to win or else there's going to be a narrative that you don't like. The Nets are your team. Folks will look to you. That's what comes along with greatness, which is what you clearly possess. You want to go back and forth? We can do that, but it ain't necessary. You know exactly what I mean. And if you're confused, you know the number. The last thing I am is hard to find. Hashtag respect. Sweet day. Danny, how many characters was that? That on a notes app? It's six different tweets all oh. tied together. Mike Ryan, let's finish this up. Where are we with all of this? Are you going to spend the rest of the show, the rest, the rest of the week, and the rest of your life with this look? No, not the rest of my life. But I, I, I think, does this suffice? Are we good on top? I feel like I, I kind of want the, right here the angles. I want them kind of sharper if possible. So yeah, Mike, why are you listening to him? <laughs> Right here, like where the cul-de-sac starts, we need it just kind of smoothed out. Well, I mean, go right over there. there. Go over yeah, there and them, uh, show yes, us please. exactly what it is that you want. Let's see visually uh, what it is that uh, needs to Did we to get to the razor here. yet? Did that happen? Yes, or? it looks like it mm, happened. I don't think Ra- we did. Razor still hasn't happened yet. See okay. right here, this line, how it kind of sco- zoops up right there. Just if we could just Turn sideways, kind of stru- Mike, so we yeah. can see what he's Mike, talking can you, about. can you show the camera, yeah. please? Spin him a little yeah. so we can see yeah, what just kind he's talking of about. There we go. Follow, yeah, follow that line. There you go there. And then on the same <laughs> thing on the other side. We still haven't had the, the straight razor, but we did get the uh, the uh, the electric razor on there. Do we need the straight razor? I feel what like about a nice fade? No, no, it. there's still some stubble. I mean, uh, I feel like it's pretty see, when I go against the grain, I could feel like friction. Yeah. The grain isn't a bad thing. <laughs> Baby's bottom is what we're going for. No grain. It's like a coastline here. Look, I mean, it's crazy. It's almost like a like a cobra's fangs right here. He's got one over here and then another one over here, and then there's <laughs> nothing in the middle. We call that a scoop ball head, I mean. <laughs> yeah, scoop ball head. Yeah. Did Woody Harrelson pull off the whatever that thing is, the cul-de-sac? Yeah, he was a little yeah, light did. on top. Yeah. Also, Ed Harris, oh, big cul-de-sac great one. guy. Yeah. Prince William, famously Ooh. terrible, did not rock it. I think he ended up getting... Some sort of hair situation taken care of. Jason Alexander also, David Cross. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You are not allowed to say that Jason Alexander <laughs> wore that well. That's not I won't, iconic. I, I simply, it was iconic. Yeah. I will not allow that. But it was iconic. Like he it he was an icon of that hairstyle. Yes, yeah. iconic. Yeah, icon, yes. yes. But right. he did not wear it well. That stands. That's, That's baby. Thank you. I love these conversations I'm having with you guys today that end with just you guys making noises. You got <laughs> Mike, you have aged, no lie, 25 years. We have, you, you are someone who now looks 60 years old because of what a terrible this lo- look this is in general <laughs> for, for anybody. It's just a terrible look. I think I am siding with Stephen A. Smith on this, though, Stugatz. I don't think that... Uh, I don't think I'm going to side with Kevin Durant or his mother, <laughs> Mama Durant. And Stephen A. is using the great Stugat shield of some people are saying. Yes, but not me. <laughs> I'm not saying it, but some people are going to remember you this way. No, I 
I'm saying it, and I've been saying it for a while. He has made some bad career decisions. I'm sorry that, and because of those decisions, Dan, he will not be thought of, and he should be because he is, but he will not be thought of as one of the greatest NBA players of all time. He just, because of those decisions he made, he left his team, he went to a team that was already stacked, and he won his championships on a stacked team, a team that didn't need him. How do I know? They won one before he was there, and they're about to win after he left. They didn't need him. It was a bad decision by him. And then he chose Kyrie, another bad decision by Kevin Durant. Just a career full of bad decisions. Sorry. Let me, you're not sorry. No. Nah. Let me pin you down on when you say Kevin Durant's not going to be remembered as one of the greatest basketball players ever. Like, what are you talking about? Like what? Honestly, what are you talking about? Like what? What's the number that you're willing to assign greatness if you're you've got Kevin Durant as others receiving votes on greatest basketball ever, basketball players ever? What's the number that you're giving greatest ever among the greatest ever? Nine, five, four guys? Like what's the number? I mean, maybe I've seen you know five guys as talented or more talented in my life than Kevin Durant. You've never seen someone his size before him who does what he does. Zero. The number's zero. It's zero. It's not one. Right. It's before him. Nobody could ever do that. You might want to say Dirk Nowitzki, but he wasn't that. No. No, he's talented. I'm not denying that he's talented, Dan. I said he should be thought of as one of the greatest NBA players ever, but he won't be. That's what Stephen A is essentially but saying. I don't I don't I just don't know what number you're putting that at. Like how can you possibly say that Kevin Durant's not going to be thought he's he, you can make the argument he's the best pure scorer we've ever seen. The most unstoppable scorer. You can make an argument for that. You could. And if you can make an argument for that, you have to put that in greatest you've ever seen. What are you saying, Mike Ryan? I didn't hear what you said. Might look like he got four butterscotch in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> well, the shaving cream is now being applied, and I made a comment back here about it tends to slope down a little on one side, and Mike heard me through these sound. I thought this was soundproof. We're all good so the, go the door is open. Theater of the mind, Billy. Okay, okay. I'll let him know. Uh, Friar Tuck from the monastery called, says he wants it baby smooth. Oh, boy. Hmm. <laughs> All right, Mike, how are you feeling right now? I don't want to Not keep Not good, it. man. <laughs> no, this is lasting way too long. I'm disappointed uh, we all didn't get a chance to like do one one like stroke with the razor with like the. Oh, well, you it's not too late. Danger. It's not too late. Let's no, do it. it, it this is, is one of those ideas. Don't. No. no. Guess what are you doing? No, no this is no. not one of those good ideas. This no, is... you, you think it's a good idea for all of us to go with a sharp blade and and just put cuts Take in turns. his head? It's somebody who's not an expert at shaving heads, taking turns. That's what oh, you guys I think is a good Sweeney idea. I learned from Sweeney Todd. <laughs> John Smoltz, by the way, pulled it off. Uh, Smoltzy. Uh, yes. Is the most excellence you've ever seen from an athlete with the cul-de-sac John Smoltz or is it Bradshaw? Because Bradshaw, Bradshaw won. Bradshaw. Bradshaw won, and Bradshaw is a Hall of Famer, but he won at a time when you could throw like nine touchdown passes and 18 <laughs> interceptions oh, a season. On, he, I will say in defense of Terry Bradshaw, he did have very light blonde hair on top during – a lot of those Super Bowl runs, and it just kind of looked like he had the cul-de-sac going. I have this photo of him on my phone right here, Dan. It's one it's of the, the weirdest screensavers I've ever seen. That it is you, what it is. That you have, you have Terry Bradshaw as a screensaver on your phone, and explain to people what it is that he's doing. He's just in. He's at. He's at a parade. It says Terry Bradshaw quarter. It's just a great '70s photo of Pittsburgh. Anyways, you can see on the top he is starting to lose. It, their hairline's receding, but he does have a comb over on top in the middle. It's just. It's farther back. Thank you, Chris. I hear you on Bradshaw, though, because he never eclipsed 4,000 yards passing. He never had over 30 touchdowns in a season. It was always like 2,500 yards and like 17 touchdowns, and he won four Super Bowls. He handed the ball to Franco Harris and Rocky Blyer. Dan, allow me to suggest World Be Free as the best with the cul-de-sac. World Be Free was so mm. good with that cul-de-sac that Ray Allen saw a picture of it once in a hallway in Cleveland and swore to himself, that if there's even a 1% chance that he starts losing his hair, he will go bald. And that's how Ray Allen went bald. He literally saw 1% of his hair start to thin and said, enough, went straight bald, and it was because of world be free. 
How many basketball players can we point to? Did John Lucas played like that, mm-hmm. did he not? Uh, how many others? Ar- uh, Artis Gilmore. Oh, that's a pretty good yeah. one. Right that'd, one. Be, that'd, be, yeah. that'd be pretty strong in terms of best we've ever seen. Uh, Chris Cody has no uh, perspective when he uh, nominates Kimbo Slice as one of the athletic excellence. Dominant athlete. Not really. <laughs> Go Cody Sack is a salute to the transporter, Jason Statham. I see you, big oh. brother. Wow. Well, but Statham. Statham's yeah. gone totally bald, hasn't he? No, but he went cold to sack for a long time. Yes, Sersky. Yes, Sersky. <laughs> I don't know why you made that Polish. <laughs> <laughs> but, but thank you, Juju, uh, for doing that. Look at uh, Mike Ryan has not done a lot of smiling here. Uh, we will, by the end of this hour, we will we'll have concluded this. Mike, are you going to keep the cul de sac for the oh, show? Fuck off. No way. <laughs> <laughs> for the show, no, no. for the sh- for the week, for, for the, the day. remainder of the show, for the yeah, day. yeah, I'll for the hop day. in the producer chair and I will. But after the show, this whole thing is coming well, off. Don't get hair on the equipment in there, man. It's new. <laughs> the misery on Mike Ryan's face. He uh, hates a mean right I now. Mean, so it, much. I mean, fluent just to laugh at him. It, to sit on the hard sofa and laugh at him is why. It's a, very hard. A mean is here. <laughs> uh, Honestly, I'm not even looking at him that hard. These are reading glasses, and I'm really struggling <laughs> to see. 10 feet in front of me. <laughs> it, it does look good visually. I will say, can you take them off for a second? Because I want to see which look is better. You with the glasses. Because I do think the accent of the glasses makes it look less bad than... Uh, <laughs> More dad. <laughs> the straight on view looks a lot better than the side view. Yes, definitely. Like he looks like, oh, yeah, that's where... Oh, man. It all falls <laughs> apart. It all falls <laughs> apart. Oh, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see that mug shot of the guy that had half a head? Yes. If you look at him straight on, it was like, hey, this is not so bad. And then the profile, he's got half a head. I'm beginning to see what you were talking about with the slope. I don't have <laughs> I don't have the proper head shape for this. I want to talk about what I believe was the best beef of the weekend. And I want to talk with our correspondent, uh, Jeff Fantucci about this because of his love of music, but also with Stugatz. I thought the Durant thing was the second best beef of the weekend, but the best beef of the weekend, Stugatz, I thought, was between Nikki Six and Eddie Vedder. Nikki Six of Motley Crue got mad because Eddie Vedder, when he was uh, speaking to the New York Times, he compared the Seattle scene to his tenure loading gear at a San Diego venue during the peak of glam metal. And he says, quote, I'd end up being at shows that I wouldn't have chosen to go to bands that monopolized late eighties, MTV, the metal bands that I'm trying to be nice. I despised girls, 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 and Motley crew bleep you. I hated it. I hated how it made the fellas look. I hated how it made the women look. It felt so vacuous. Nikki six, response made me laugh today reading how much the singer in Pearl Jam hated Motley Crue now considering that they're one of the most boring bands in history it's kind of a compliment (laughs) isn't it hashtag the stadium tour hashtag rock and roll roll now Motley Crue I don't think was any good musically but they weren't boring there's no you they put on a show. You, yes. Well, you can't say that Motley Crue in any way was boring. The the biography, I guess it's a biography. It's about a band, uh, but the story of Motley Crue in book form is one of the most interesting music books I've ever read. Just because they were all so close to always dying because of how hard Nikki Six did die. And, yeah, and came back. Right. Yeah, he was dead. He was dead for two minutes. Yeah, two full syringes of adrenaline brought him back. He was dead for two full minutes. But as an artist, Nikki Six can't look at Eddie Vedder and say, I'm the musician that Pearl Jam is. <laughs> like, Motley Crue can say we're interesting and not boring, but no, I think what he's saying... I Dan, think- have you ever died before? Right. Have you ever have you ever died? Don't talk shit about somebody that died. 
yes. and came back. It's a dangerous game, Dan. Mike's right. <laughs> so you're siding with Motley Crue on yeah. this? You're siding with Nikki Six on yeah. this? Yeah. No, Pearl Jam is kind of boring relative to dying for two minutes. <laughs> I think that's what he's saying. Like, hey, you can say what you want about our music, but we're not boring. And certainly not in comparison to you. And I've been to Pearl Jam concerts, and I like Pearl Jam, and I like Eddie Vedder. Uh, their concerts are not boring, but I imagine a Motley Crue concert was a lot more entertaining just visually. I don't like the music, but I imagine they put on a better show. I found out who Mike looks like. He looks like Richard from Guess Who. Look, if you look right here in the Zoom. Oh, the game, Guess Who? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All he needs is a mustache, and it's perfect. Yeah. Can we yep. can we glue some of that hair back onto his face? That's an idea. <laughs> Why'd you shave the beard, Mike? I feel like the beard would have given you a whole different vibe with this. I needed to shave the beard for the bald cap gag. Ah, the bald cap. Because I wanted the bald cap to look convincing. <laughs> but now, now you can see Papada. That was a gag? Okay, are you guys cool with this? Can I no. get out of this chair? No, absolutely not yet. Well, no, I can't go what to, it means get out of my so. chair. I'm not bald enough on top. <laughs> Those sheets look so comfortable on you, though. They are actually. Where could you get some? Sheetsgiggles.com. <laughs> who put a, who put a mean in charge? I don't know. <laughs> a natural mean born leader. <laughs> I think I'm bald enough. I think I'm bald. That enough. is yeah. a good, that is a close yeah, shave. Look at you that. You can see your reflection in that head. Oh, All right, come over here and sit in uh, sit in your seat here so that we could do the Get next some aftershave. hour of the show. La Esquina, the Chumadio. Let's close out this hour here. Uh, Whittingham, you did a hell of a job. I'm glad we sent you out there for Sad Sad Radio Row. I appreciate you just sitting there. I mean, whisper to us. There's no one there yet. I, mean. I can't believe you ate in and out without me, you asshole. Yes, he's really mad at you. What happened there, Whittingham? What, why did you eat? We've been it? talking about it for weeks. Why and the first night without me you piece of why did you do that without chris cody who wanted to share the experience with you why do you think i'd have an objection to going to in and out twice it was the end of a very long day i got up at the equivalent of 3 a.m pacific time i my flight was delayed by three hours and i, I came here there's issues with the camera guy there's issues with all kinds of stuff that's going on out here i was tired there was an in and out three minutes from our hotel and i went and got in and out i'll go again chris it'll be fine still angry I think he wanted his first time to be with you, though. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Or your yes. first time to be with you. Oh, him. I see. He, he wanted your that, first no, time and his first Whitty, time to are, be together. Are you not yeah. understanding that, Witty? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, what Mike. He, what he was hoping for, <laughs> Witty, was he really thought that you and he were going to share a spiritual journey and that you denied him. We would take him. the same bite. Like, we would take our first bites at the same time. We'd get yeah. it on some content with it. It's just, I, I had Lady it all. in the I, tramps I, and I, French I hate fries. to break yes. it to you, Chris. I've had in and out before. Before I arrived here, like this that is not my first in and out. I've been to, to Los me. Angeles before, and you I've had in and out. to me. I said we'd do a gag where you would eat it animal I style, and I would you. eat it with a fork and knife. We're still going to do that. Oh, you ruined the gag. I hate, Spoiler I hate him already. This is yeah. going to be a fun week. <laughs> I love that you're treating this as if somebody, you know, who hasn't, who's a virgin is just learning for the first time that their partner has had a great deal of sex and you were hoping to share. People have told me that in and out is like sex. So that's kind of what I was envisioning. Timothy Chalamet and Lady Bird Dan. I mean, in and out is the way some people might describe you having sex. Animal style. <laughs>
It is time for Stugatz to share his game notes. No one in the media will tell you what happened better than my boy Stu. Weekend observations brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste, 96 calories available for delivery. Dan, it started decades ago by Mike and the Mad Dog. According to Mike and the Mad Dog, it grew and it grew and it eventually turned into a sports radio tradition unlike any other. A place where sports radio hosts would gather and compare resumes. A place their producers would fight till the death to get Jerry Rice to come over to their table to say absolutely nothing. A place Gil Brandt would roam aimlessly. A place where the seas parted when Jim Rome walked in, it was heaven. It, of course, peaked two years ago in Miami when Trey Wingo took 18 shots of Cuban coffee and walked to Hawaii without blinking. <laughs> Shortly after, the pandemic hit. And like most great things, it went away. But as the pandemic subsides, for now, and we return to some sense of normalcy, Dan... Make no mistake about it. Radio Row is back. Witty is there. Witty is in the middle of the sadness. It's back. <laughs> Ambient sound. Ambient sadness. <laughs> Listen to that. The sights. The sounds. The sadness. Look at how close to the Super Bowl we are right there. <laughs> how many ass cracks can you see right now? Can't wait. G give us a number, Whittingham. How Over many ass under two cracks? And a half. How, how many? Over two and a half ass cracks. Really? A bunch of you. engineers yep. Oh, yep. bent Setting over. Setting up shop. I mean. yes, uh, <laughs> order long. <laughs> No one, no one compares to Chris Cody's long ass crack. I'll be there soon. <laughs> Romy, Hal, speaking of back, LeBron is back to playing like he's 30. NBA All-Star Weekend. It used to mean something. <laughs> uh, we, I believe we're sending. I believe. I don't think I'm breaking news here. Maybe I'm not allowed to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I think Andre Iguodala is about to be our Metal Lark All Star what? correspondent. Iggy? Yeah, yeah. Oh think, my god! I, uh, I thought we were just sending Drunk Amin over to Cleveland. I, I thought it was. Wait, wait what? I, yeah, I think uh, he if threatened. It, I think Andre Iguodala <laughs> is going to be doing correspondence work for us there. Next, well, we are sending Drunk Amin though, right? Yeah, I don't Wait. think he wants to go to Cleveland. No, 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 no. Well, who does? No, no, I don't do winters. This is why we can't do a live yeah, show. Nice I'm pretty sure when Dan asks a question, I don't know if I can do this. The answer is always no. Yeah. And I think he knows that he can't do it. <laughs> really? Coming from you? <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> coming from you. Coming from you. <laughs> Top five things that used to mean something. This is big. Number five, science. Number four, a wink and a nod. <laughs> Number three, a handshake. <laughs> Two, the truth. <laughs> and number one, Dan, the NBA All-Star Weekend. <laughs> You agree, it seems. Like. <laughs> I mean, that's a good list. <laughs> Speaking of things that used to mean something, Duke and Carolina. The New York Giants hiring Brandon Brown, who is black, as their assistant general manager. Had he play? The Dolphins hiring a multiracial head coach in Mike McDaniel. Had he or play? Football. I miss you. George Hill, where are you? Wherever you are, you won't be there for long. <laughs> <laughs> it is trade deadline it week, Dan. It is trade Dano. deadline. Put it, it is on George the, Hill week. Put, put it to put it on the poll, Gear at Lebetard Show is the most guaranteed. Uh, we don't know if he, I don't know if he's with a contender right now. Is it, how many teams removed are we from Milwaukee? Like where is I think he's at Philly? Where, I is, think. where is George Hill right now? Wherever it is that he is, he's right. He'll be somewhere else soon. Is the most guaranteed thing in the universe that George Hill is going to be on the move? At the trading deadline. 
He's already packed his bags. They're always packed. <laughs> yes, they are. This week, they're, he only all, they're, they're, he, they're <laughs> always packed this week. Uh, healthy Miami Heat. Best team in the East, I think. I'm actually not sure. I don't think I've seen them healthy this season. But when they are, man, are they tough to handle. Did they have the second most road games the first half of the season as anybody in the sport? I think they did. Like, they had a ton of road games. Hmm. I'll check on it. Question. If a Carolina-Duke game happened, but no one knew and no one watched, did it actually happen? Tobacco Road. the matter with me i mean you have some sort of strange <laughs> tourette that makes you do things like that yeah kevin durant when the warriors win the title this year and you don't make it to the nba finals you'll finally understand i think kyrie irving is the most overrated superstar in the history of sports you agree right is kyrie irving yes. a superstar i mean i I mean, he's really. This is what a team looks like when it's led by Kyrie Irving. They lose eight straight. This I mean, is what it looks like. What, okay, well, what, I know he's only playing road games, <laughs> but six of those games have been on the road. Well, when he played for the Cavs as their lead player, they were not a good uh, basketball team. Dan, are are you questioning whether he's a superstar? I mean, he's great at basketball. Are we doing this but, again? Well, it, I, I mean, he's not wrong that if Kyrie Irving's your best player, you're not winning anything. Thank like you. he's not wrong about that. Well, you you were wrong about Jimmy Butler though, and I'll never forget that. Okay. Well, Jimmy Butler hasn't won anything yet. Oh, I'm sorry. The Eastern Conference Championship doesn't matter. No. Okay. Do it in the finals. He kind of did do it in the finals. <laughs> he <laughs> yeah, but he didn't win. Way. He did it, but and, he didn't win. And Kyrie does have the biggest shot, or because of LeBron. Okay, but yes. it it is at like forty points. But I mean, yeah, it because is of LeBron. Is it or is it not fair to say that if Kyrie Irving's your best player, you're not winning? You're not winning for real. What is winning for real? Winning he's a title. Your, he's, it doesn't even have to be that for me. If he's your best player, how far are you going? He was the best player in Boston. Okay. They, they, and they, they weren't very good. They, yes, made they, their, they, they no. went to the conference finals. They went to the conference semifinals. I, I mean, they, without him. They did it without they, him. They he was better, hurt. They were no. better without him. The they year, were better with Isaiah Thomas. The year they lost role. to the Bucks. The year they lost to the Bucks in the second round. He took them to the second round. Oh, I'm not saying he's one of the five best players in the league, but to say he's not a superstar, I think that's a bridge too far. Okay, fair enough. Sorry. A bridge too far. <laughs> <laughs> I said he was a superstar, just an overrated one. That's okay, yeah, I, I can accept that one, Stu Gatz. Dan said <laughs> he isn't you. a superstar. <laughs> well, I sort of asked, Izzy is what I did. I asked. Kevin Durant somehow looks more valuable when he doesn't play. Poor Phoenix Suns fans. They're falling for it again and forgetting that Chris Paul is allergic to rings, diamonds, and jewelry in general. Kelly Slater, 50 years old, and still out here winning surfing competitions. Jimmy Slade, the big 5-0. You know what the S in Slater stands for, Dan? I do not. Slow weekend in sports. You know what I'm doing, Dan? I do not. Making chicken salad out of chicken shit. How about that? The Nassau Coliseum turns 50 this Friday. <laughs> it's looked 50 since 1985. Top five things about the Nassau Coliseum. Number five, 20 minutes from my house. Number four, Ziggy Palfy. Number three, Beer Dogs. Number two, all the late 80s and early 90s dead shows. And number one, Dan. The 80s Islanders. Specifically. Oh, here we go again. Clark Gillies, Butch Goring, and the Sutter Brothers. How about that, brothers? Dwayne and Brent. Now, Brent would give you 40 to 50 goals, and Dwayne, he was an enforcer. He would give you 40 to 50 penalty minutes a week. It was amazing. The Sutter brothers. How about that? Best sports siblings of all time. Top oh, five. Ready? Come on. Oh, you're going to like this come one. On. Number five, Bob and Mike Bryan. The Bryan brothers. 116 titles, 16 majors, a gold medal, $27 million in earnings. 
Pretty good, huh? Number four. Phil and Tony Esposito. Espo. Number three. Peyton. <laughs> Eli. <laughs> and Cooper Manning. Peyton and Eli, of course, each with two rings. Cooper, hit podcast. Soup with Coop. Number two, Serena and Venus. And number one, Dan, the Sutters. <laughs> Chicken salad. Chicken shit. Dan, you know what the definition of sticking out like a sore thumb is? Matt Jones on a Pro Bowl roster with Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert. If you had Ravens tight end Mark Andrews at even money, as the guy who would take the Pro Bowl most seriously, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> that guy was playing to win. <laughs> <laughs> Andrews. <laughs> Five of ten. 53 yards. No touchdowns. One interception. Something's just a little off with Patrick Mahomes. The Cavs got Karis LeVert. If, if healthy, Dan, could be the missing piece. The Cavs are good. Like, while no one was watching, the Cavs got really, really good. They're good. Title contenders. No. Oh, yes, they are. No. They're a game out in the East. No, Stu God. No. no. Should we no. ask him in? They are, they are a middle of uh, the pack playoff team, a four or five seed that is not. Uh, East okay. is wide open. <laughs> With the, the teams that are better than them are better than them, like, by a good amount. Right. I don't know. They're a game out in the East. I don't. And they just got Levert. Still got. Still got. Pump the brakes. Why? Just pump the brakes. Because? Title contender? I mean, they're one out in the East. The East is wide open, is it not? Are they title contenders? You just got sat down and I told did. me that Kyrie Irving yeah. couldn't win, right? Well, he can't. But you think the Cavs can well, yesterday I didn't, but today I do because they got Karis LeVert. Put a fine bond on it. Raptors. <laughs> dangerous. I mean, are they dangerous? Raptors? Yeah. Dangerous to whom? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know is how quickly he bailed on that. He just wanted, <laughs> to, to, say, he, he just wanted, he just wanted to say dangerous. You don't want to see that team first round of the playoffs, Dan. Herbivore dinosaur. <laughs> It's all he had. All he had is dangerous. He had nothing else in that, in that holster. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> to whom really deflated him. If you were a witness on the stand, you would have started weeping and wet yourself. <laughs> you had nothing. He simply asked I you, wasn't planning on asking him. He asked you to elaborate on dangerous, and you fell apart like a thousand cards stacked on each other. I was just going to start naming names. Van Vliet's. <laughs> I would love to see how many Raptors names you could rattle off. Right, let me think about this. <laughs> I have it's faith like, in you. I, I, well, Siakam's not even going to be there at the trading deadline. So take a good, you took away a good yeah, one. That was a good one. Yeah, I know, Dan. Now I'm stuck. Um, Van Vliet. Valanchunas, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Jonas. <laughs> Two teams ago. <laughs> I, thought, what? I thought it was five teams Jerome ago. Jerome Williams. Wow. Junkyard dog. I mean, <laughs> Walt Williams. <laughs> yeah, okay. Damon Stoudemire. Uh-huh. <laughs> they were good. <laughs> Not with Damon. Uh, insanity, though. Bucks, right where they want to be. You agree, I mean? Sure. <laughs> good. Celtics, starting to wake up. I mean... In the in the NBA since January first, yeah, starting to wake up. Matthew Stafford. Oh, we're done. Yep, where Joe Burrow is going to have the same amount of rings as Aaron Rodgers and one more than Dan Marino. Football, hell of a game. Speaking of hell, our Bryles, Dan. Those are the weekend observations. Thank you, Stugatz. All week long on YouTube, we will be going these 40 and 50 minute hours without a commercial break. So you can enjoy it all week long. We encourage you to subscribe, YouTube.
slash Levitard and friends. You need to do this if you want to get two hours a day. We're going to start a little later every day this week so that we can account for West Coast time. Chris Cody is headed out there with Tony. Whittingham is already there. Whittingham, you were not a part of the conversation. There's some, there are some things in entertainment that I want to get to. I want to get to, uh, let's talk about Cosby. I want to get to everything that's happening with Joe Rogan. Uh, but while... You were getting set up over there in the first hour. We were talking about on Netflix, Tinder Swindler. It's one of these. Uh, there are a lot of documentaries being made about, I don't know which uh, genre is more popular, uh, schemes or murder. But there's a lot of stuff being made that is feeding these appetites. And I can't stop watching even as I feel a disgust. That Stugatz, I don't know if Bernie Madoff was the first one, but just I can't imagine people lying so much, even though I work with one, people lying so much that from every angle the world is closing in on them and they just have to tell more and more lies to keep uh, the police off them, to keep people who care about uh, them off of them. So, Whittingham, I was told that you have very strong opinions on Tinder Swindler, that we were not a Tinder Swindler that we did not get to hear during the first hour. Yeah, I watched it on my flight out to Los Angeles, and I I just could not believe that story from beginning to end. And uh, Stugatz, I hate to say, it did uh, offer me a prism into uh, how to eventually deal with multi-level lies. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was made to me on a couple of fronts. Mm -hmm. You know what I do, though? Because Stugatz, Mm -hmm. I want to believe in you, but sometimes you unfortunately don't back that trust. Uh, So I I, I (laughs) was just stunned in watching how, number one, like women kept falling for that, like kept falling for the like the way that he portrayed himself and the way that this guy who kind of makes him seem like he's the, the son of a diamond billionaire and, you know, is, is flying around. I just couldn't believe that, like, they kept falling into the same traps of sending this guy money and believing the stories, and it's this pyramid scheme. But I found two elements of it really fascinating. Number one was the way that the last woman in the documentary finally said, I've had enough, and I'm going to turn the tables on you, and you're going to be the one that's asking me for money over and over and over again and feeding into the lie. And two, Dan, like, honestly, the second half of the movie was a journalism documentary and how they were able to piece this thing together and the Norwegian newspaper that put together a compelling enough story to get this guy arrested and get and, and, and a sting operation, I thought after the first 40 minutes of just scam after scam after scam after scam, it became kind of boring. But when it turns into, all right, how are we going to actually nail this guy down and the journalism in the sting operation, I thought it was fascinating. Always impressed uh, when, to me, journalists do better, stronger, deeper work that cares more than the, than, than the police. But this is a small case for the police. And I was surprised by the zeal with which those Norwegian journalists chased a story that I would have thought chased it all over the world. Uh, Woody, I'm curious, like, what your takeaway was about the woman who swindled the Tinder swindler. How do we then take her approach and then swindle Stugatz during one of his swindles to us? Because I like to apply what I learn in these documentaries sometimes to real life. And I thought that that was a fascinating twist. Well, but this guy was a bit of a uh, amateur as it came to swindling. You have a harder... uh, you have a harder task here in trying to outswindle. <laughs> I love you guys. I mean, showering me with compliments this morning. It's very nice of you. I mean, stop, please. <laughs> I, I also, Sugats, I, to, in, in fairness to you, I do not have you taking $40,000 to fuel a luxurious lifestyle from me. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you're quite the swindler. <laughs> However, it would appear to be that the way to swindle the swindler is to hold something of value to you. And uh, Stugatz, uh, frankly, you know, again, we're, we're, we're having an honest conversation right now. Mm-hmm. It's probably money. And so if you need, if there's something that pr- will provide you monetary gain and you need it quickly, I feel like that's when I that's when I swindle you. I don't know when those situations would arise, but that I feel like, Jessica, is is the way to swindle the swindler is have, hold something of value over someone. And then, you know, you, t- you, you push the leverage. He did drop a few hundred bucks out of his pocket last week. So. Yes. Well, this was weird. What Mm. happened last week? Stugatz was asking everybody via text as uh, one of the last cash holders anywhere in the world, me and him, 
uh, <laughs> dying dinosaur breed of cash holders. That day, Stugatz had a lot of cash, and the unthinkable happened. I he, lost it. He lost it, and yes. I could not believe, given the attention that he pays to cash, that you lost a, a wad of bills. Here's a detail I'm not certain you're aware of. I uh, I put that much money. First off, carrying money these days, my kids were laughing at me. Just la like they haven't <laughs> they haven't used money in years. Okay, but the jeans I put on that morning, and I knew this was the case when I put them on, had a hole in the pocket. They couldn't have been. It couldn't have been such a big hole that all of that a wad. I've seen the wad. It was a big hole. Around. Man. Why are you putting money in that pocket? It's a good question. <laughs> That's just me doing a deep dive it's, on some of the nope. details that I have. You dove here. deep, and it's a fair question. Um, <laughs> he texted you guys, us. Why don't you throw those pants in the bin? I don't like, wear it. Why I wore them again on? since. I mean, Jesus. I have two pairs of jeans. What do you want from me? This is it is fascinating. His closet must be fascinating. You got the one suit that doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> I imagine he has one of those like closets that a cartoon character has where they open it and it's just the same outfit like yeah. 50 all times. It's just yeah. all faded gray. It's like 50 of these hoodies hats. that I'm wearing right yes. now. Right. A dead hat up top, hoodies on the middle, and then some shorts at the bottom. Exactly. Right. You're right. You got it. And two pairs of lonely pants. Can I'm I ask Witty if, like about the lay of the land? Yeah, I'm going to be out there this week. Witty, how close are we to Mad Dog? I need I need him to Pretty be within. Close. Like I need to be. We are very him. close. It, are it we? Is directly. I'm going to move the camera right now. <laughs> that that <laughs> stage. Go. That stage right there. There are three Sirius XM setups next to each other. Uh, one for NFL Radio. One for Mad Dog Radio. I think one for extemporaneous Sirius Chat. <laughs> so uh, we are very close wait. to Mad Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Last year's Radio Row is the saddest I've ever seen because it was pandemic and it was like seven college kids there in a giant ballroom where no one. One had shown up. There's going to be vibrance and activity there. Is there not? It's not yet there, correct? You're, you're there too early. It's nine o'clock in the morning there on Monday. Things don't Very get punctual, Dan. Don't get going. But what's happening right now? There are what? Like just six or seven teams of people. There aren't many people there right now, right? I would say right now, active shows that are going on, there are three. There's one in the middle of the room. There's us, and there's Jim Rome in the corner of the room on CBS Sports Network. The seas of party. Adjust my camera here. <laughs> are, are, the jungle. Are Jim Rome's bodyguards there? Uh, is it bodyguards plural because Fudge Brown has declared that the Super Bowl does not start until Jim Rome gets there? <laughs> it has been declared. Bodyguards. I'm, I'm going to have to approach their setup and see if there's bodyguards over there. Maybe tap one on the shoulder and see what's up. I think I'm going to have to wait because I don't think any of you have uh, seen yet. Let's talk about Cosby on Showtime, but it's a four part it's a four part documentary and it's the first I've seen come out on all the Cosby stuff and it's uh, it's deeply uncomfortable and it's hard to get your head around the the, the combination of this man who was beloved as America's father and was a pioneer as a black personality showing people that black people could be the beloved head of a sitcom that moved America would be guilty of these crimes and how it was undone. It was fascinating to watch, but I'll wait for some of you to have seen it before we talk about it. I wanted to talk about what it is that happened with Joe Rogan again this weekend as Spotify's stock price continues to take a hit and Joe Rogan had and Spotify had to take down more than a hundred episodes where he uses the N-word, The Rock, initially supported Joe Rogan publicly and then walked it entirely back when informed of the use of the N-word. The context that Joe Rogan offers, that he never directed the N-word toward someone with hate and was always just using it too flippantly and said that he shouldn't have used it, the context he offered is the only reason he's not fired already today because as uncancelable as he is if he had used that word directed at somebody that way he would not be working anymore at spotify but spotify for the moment is enduring everything that comes 
with having Joe Rogan. And some of you heard from la heard last week, and maybe this is my fault as the communicator. Some of you have heard a defense of Joe Rogan from me when I'm not defending him. I'm marveling that someone who comes from reality television and was doing things like having contestants drink bull sperm, somebody who comes from people fighting in cages, somebody who comes from the world of comedy, I'm marveling at the idea that he would have responsibilities on him when talking that he never could have imagined having where he comes from. What the, his path would indicate that he thought you could talk into a microphone and there will not be responsibilities and consequences that will ever come from that. He had no place along his path where he would learn Hey, if I say thing that is polarizing counterculture, if I do thing X, it's going to result in anything other than my audience growing. The only consequence to anything Joe Rogan has done throughout the entirety of his career, the consequence is more people paying attention to him, more money, more fame, but not more responsibility. More responsibility has never been one of the consequences that he had to factor. So that you guys heard a defense in there somewhere when all I'm doing is marveling. Man, guy who comes from comedy. I mean, Whitney Cummings is still out here defending Joe Rogan because she's trying to defend con comedy as Mark Marin is going in her mentions and saying, hey, one of the responsibilities of a comedian is also to be funny. Joe Rogan separates now because it's been this way for a while. He does funny over here, but funny is not what he's been doing that has gotten him into trouble. What has gotten him into trouble is not testing comedy's boundaries. What's gotten him into trouble is that he's never had any consequences, and this is the first time that people are assuming, hey, Joe Rogan, if you've got a microphone, it does come with a responsibility. I don't know where he would have learned that before now, but he's learning it the hard way, and he says that Spotify has been very supportive, but I don't know how many more of these Spotify can endure. Well, their CEO said they will not silence him even after the most the most recent thing that came out. Well, he he was also the CEO was also quoted as saying in a private meeting, "Hey, to to his employees, uh, but part of what we're doing as an audio strategy, there are going to be things said that are going to hurt people and make people angry and make people sad, and that is part of where it is that we're headed. You're just going to have to eat. You're hurt and you're sad." I think part of also why he's quote unquote getting away with it is because there are no shortage of black comedians who come out and said uh, high profile ones, Donnell Rawlings and Dave Chappelle. And they're saying, no, I know this guy. And I don't think that he has a, a, an ill intent in anything he's done. And he apologized for the mistake. And them, I think vouching for him has also helped quell any sort of clamor for him to get fired. Here is Whitney Cummings on Twitter saying comedians did not sign up to be your hero. It's our job to be irreverent and dangerous to question authority and take you through a spooky mental haunted house so you can arrive at your own conclusions. Stay focused on the people we pay taxes to be moral leaders. And Mark Marin was chiming in with, uh, you know, comedian's job is also to be funny. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, I, I saw someone say this the other day that comedians go to a vulnerable place. You know, the, the, the art of stand up comedy is going to a vulnerable place and talking about things that people are insecure about. But the idea is that we're all, we all have these insecurities and thoughts that we think of, but don't say out loud. And these people give us the license to do that. And the only thing uh, you have as a recourse is either to go ha ha or don't go a ha ha. And that's, that's the beauty of comedy. And also that's the danger as well. I think that one of the things that makes a play here all the time, whether it's me or Whitney Cummings, is that this time scares people who are used to microphone freedom. It scares, it scares a lot of people, even as comedians are telling you, hey, be a better comedian. There are plenty of comedians out there who are simply scared and they know Comedy don't work playing scared. So there are a whole lot of people well, that find themselves defending the idea of comedy in this landscape when what they're really doing is defending their ability to not get in trouble 
while doing comedy. But he has stepped outside of comedy and tackled some very tricky and difficult, you know, subjects and conversations. Dan. But it's, so it's, it ceases to be comedy but, when you're giving people when you're bucking against science and telling people not to get vaccinated. But it's I mean, until now it has garnered at every turn great success know. and great results being exactly how it is. That he's been. It is surprising to me, though, that Spotify would make that kind of investment and nobody would listen to the episodes to know what's in there. I I just think we were talking earlier in the show about the amount of vetting that might go into just a head coach, the amount of questions you would, the amount of invasive questions that you would ask before making an investment in a head coach. I, I would think that there would be a vetting process before you give someone a hundred, two hundred million dollars that doesn't result in the hundred and ten episodes that you'd know what you were getting, that you wouldn't be surprised that you would get caught off guard this way. I don't think that that's necessarily true. I think they see how many people listen to the show and that's the only vetting that they really need and whatever else happens, they'll worry about it later, which is what just happened, basically. But me and Mike were talking about this months ago, I think. We talked about Always Sunny being such a great show, part of which is because it's not so popular, right? If it, if it was just a little bit more popular, a lot of people would discover these episodes that can come off as insensitive or kind of or even, you know, crossing a line. But it's that just up to that line before it hits mainstream popularity, which is what happened to Rogan. Rogan was doing great. Before Spotify, he was he was making millions and millions of dollars. Spotify just took it to another level, but it also puts a huge spotlight on everything he does. And and you, I hear you say a lot that like there's this fear or like people behind a microphone have never been more afraid. But I think it's more scary to live in a world where people can just spout misinformation or not be accountable for transphobic comments or sexist or misogynistic or racist comments, hateful comments. And just be able to say whatever they want, unfiltered and unchecked. And like, if that's what you're looking for, and that's what you want a show to be, going through a mainstream publisher like Spotify, it does not surprise me at all that they would like to kind of pair some of that back. I, th- I think Stu Gatz made a good point, and in, in the distinction is when his show is not really a comedy show. Yes, he talks to comedians sometimes, but he has a lot of serious conversations. And I think there's a difference because... Ultimately, what every comedian, the reason why they're standing up, all the comedians who are standing up for Rogan, is because they wonder, okay, it's cool when we're doing what Dan says, the easy stance. Oh, you shouldn't say that, right? What happens when the easy stance comes to me? What happens when it's not an easy stance? It's, it's, not, it's not different from when you guys asked me about the son's ownership issue with the, the comments and all. I said, will the owners vote him out? And I said, no. I said, why not? Because they know... If we lower the bar to here, now we're all susceptible. Nobody wants that power to happen, that idea that we turn a spotlight on you and now you're the one. As America and the world puts up their fists on everything and is divided about everything, Stugatz, one of the things that I made uncomfortable, even though the people listening to this know where I side on Trump or anything else, What makes me uncomfortable is these YouTubes and Twitter and everyone else doing something that even though I agree with them not allowing the misinformation, not allowing Trump to do what Trump has been doing, I'm made uncomfortable by the idea of that can come for any of us at any point. It's come. I happen to be on the side this time of the people doing the banning. But if I weren't, the banning would reinforce my thought of this doesn't seem like America. If I did not agree with the YouTubes and the Twitters that are doing something that feels like censorship, and I was on the other side of this, Stugatz, it only increases the division. It, it doesn't change minds to ban these people. It only makes them more of a martyr or more of a freedom fighter or more of a pioneer to the army that is assembled behind them and is viewing that as the man coming down 
on our freedoms. The 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 I mean, it's it's the basis of our our Bill of Rights, right? The you know the right to free speech and to say things as idiotic as they sound. Now again, it's different when you are saying things that are leading people to do dangerous things. For instance, freedom of speech doesn't cover my ability to stand up in a movie theater and say fire because the ensuing trampling might hurt people, and that's that's not allowed. But again, when we talk about content and content creating, and particularly content creating in places where it's a more creative space, where we blur lines, right? The idea that someone can say, no, shut them down because I don't like what they're saying. It makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Just in, in, in a vacuum. Yes. In a vacuum by itself, that is something that I would uh, say I don't want that in my life. But this isn't a vacuum, obviously, when you're when you're talking about misinformation during a public health crisis. But like this has always been the case, like in the network news era, the FCC had strict rules and regulations about what you could say on network news. And now we're in like this kind of, you know, uncharted territory where anyone can really create their own show and have access to an audience. You don't need to be on a TV station anymore. And there aren't really rules or regulations about what you can say into a microphone. It's all left up to private companies to decide what their threshold is for pushback. So what you're seeing is a company deciding we're going to draw the line at COVID misinformation because it's going to affect our bottom line and we're a public facing company. And now we have to respond to investors who generally are swayed by like what the public perception of a, a topic is and the public perception of the vaccine is that it's mostly good and it's better for public health if people take it so we've drawn the line there but dan are you saying that if he gets fired from this job that if every time he gets in trouble it only enhances his profile with his base with his base of listeners because i agree with that like like it see these are horrible things that i think joe rogan is saying some of them not all of them some of them but I do think every time he gets in trouble, his listeners like him even more. It's crazy. No, they built they've built a whole thing. They're trying to silence him. You see that this is what they do when there's a, someone who's a counter revolution or counter. He's bucking up against the corporate, right? Yeah. So yeah. now it's it's us against the man, which is what his basis thing. So absolutely, you're right, Stugatz. It is buffering him up and and making him even more powerful. It's not unlike. Do you guys remember when Passion of the Christ came out? And all these people said, oh, my God, this movie's terrible. You shouldn't watch it. What happened? It did bonkers numbers because people, well, let me see what the big deal is. Let me see what, what the fuss is about. And a little of that is happening with Joe Rogan, I believe. Infamous and polarizing is not bad for business for as long as you can stay in business. Correct. Before we move on to funniest thing from the sports weekend, which we're going to do in just a second here, I want to ask off of this, Stugatz. I just saw a documentary about Don Rickles on Prime Video. Prime Video really hasn't had a, a hit, right? I mean, we've talked about the boys, but uh, Prime Video has, has not had a, a big hit. And I found a, and this isn't going to be it, but I saw a documentary on Don Rickles. and Anna, Fleabag was a big hit, no? Yes, it was. It was critically acclaimed. Yes, you're right. I saw the documentary on Don Rickles and... It's an older documentary because there are a lot of people in it who aren't even living anymore. But as I was watching it, uh, and and all of these people, they talked to everybody about Don Rickles. They had every person there, all of whom knighted him as that dude is comedy. Everybody sat down because they wanted to honor that dude. And I'm watching it and I'm like, none of that would work today. Like, he can't do any of that. It was just insult comedy and it was... It was uh, straight offensive, but Don Rickles and and there were people, there were comedians in the documentary saying, "Well, Don could get away with it because he was grandfathered in, and it's and it's Don." But I'm listening to it. I'm like, he couldn't get away with any of that today. Like there, that 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 one of the comedy legends could not work today doing that as his as his act uh, because all of it was offensive embedded offense that people were laughing at but everybody who was laughing at it looked like Dean Martin and and Johnny Carson and it just it wouldn't be allowed anymore what did you make of what some people like John Stewart and to a much lesser degree even yourself who come out with uh takes on Joe Rogan that aren't hypercritical that kind of defend his right to apologize and try to be better and move on John Stewart uh, a, 
has known Joe Rogan for a while, came from a, a similar area, I believe. And he made the point um, on his platform that Joe Rogan didn't sound like someone that you can't reason with, that didn't know the error of his ways. It wasn't just denying the truth of what he did was offensive. Even in the apology, he says he understands what he did wrong and he's working to correct that. And because someone is showing those um, those attributes, you shouldn't cast them aside. And a lot of people got angry at Jon Stewart for, for a tepid defense of Joe Rogan. What do you make of that? I am always interested in judging the sincerity of contrition. When The Rock says, I supported Joe Rogan, and then he learns, he used the N-word a bunch, and The Rock says, learning moment for me. I want to give people the wide berth of making the mistake and learning from the mistake because I myself would like that wide berth. I myself would like to be treated that way. So when I am talking about Joe Rogan, what I am often trying to do, talking about Joe Rogan or anybody else, is explain behavior without applying the judgment of whether or not you think I'm excusing behavior. I don't have firing power over Joe Rogan. You rarely hear me say something on here that anybody should be fired. I sometimes will say that's a fireable offense, but I don't want people's freedoms impinged and i don't want more fear in an environment where i want people to speak freely but i also don't want to be misconstrued as defending somebody when i'm simply asking for leniency across the board for everyone on everything just about short of you know some of the things Maybe the that end up possibly well, no, some things that kill people for example yeah. which well, is what something... if the words are dangerous I the n-word and know, pushing but, that but hey the I, vaccine is not something right. that you should get i mean that's I, ridiculous I, I, no, no no i don't want this to appear like we're ganging up and he should i'm be not ganging up saying. mike but i mean he has a responsibility to not say that stuff and if you say it apologize but he hasn't done that he keeps he has, doubling no, 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 he, he has, has apologized, apologized. The vaccine stuff? Still, yeah. he's apologized he apologized for getting some stuff wrong because he had to. But Stugatz, you that, you will jump no, to the conclusion. You will jump to the conclusion, Stugatz, of never having listened to Joe Rogan at all, and simply you will get swept up with the angry mob and not even knowing what you're condemning. That's fireable. That's ridiculous. You love to fire people. I'm not going to sit here and defend Joe Rogan. I'm not the person who you've heard say to you that what Joe Rogan is doing with misinformation is right. I just want this space to be as lenient as can possibly be, and I don't want the corporations deciding it for me. I don't trust the corporations either. I don't want the corporations telling me what's right and wrong. I didn't like that experience when I had it, and I had it much smaller than this. And so I'm looking at it through my prism as... Whitney Cummings is, as a whole lot of people in comedy are, the people who like and are friends with Joe Rogan. Of course they're going to defend Joe Rogan. I know the man. I Of course. They've got, a, they've got more information than the rest of us do. They love this person that they know outside of what's happening right now with the angry mob that makes him this one thing when he is not just this one thing. But what he's been doing is indeed dangerous. I don't think that that's up for dispute. Even he would tell you that right now, even if he's been forced to tell you that right now. But I don't like a climate and won't like a climate where any degree of nuance that you try to apply to any of this gets you shouted down because we're so divided in our corners, in our own echo chambers, that there is no degree. You can't come. You either have to be furious, fire him, get him the hell out of here. And if you come one degree further than that, you get even the rockets run off. Like, if you come one degree further than that, I don't think that's healthy for anybody to be in such an extreme position that none of us can talk about any of this stuff unless we're echoing exactly what the person next to us is saying. That's why I keep it to football, Tim. Let's do funniest thing from the sports weekend. Hey, people. Tell us what in the sport made you laugh hard this weekend. It is a segment we call What Made You Laugh This Weekend. Ha, ha, ha. Funniest thing for the sports weekend is presented by CBDMD. 
Chris Cody, what was the funniest thing from the sports weekend? Lakers fans just wanting Russell Westbrook to never touch the ball. There are videos you can get on the internet of like he's about to shoot a shot and you just hear, no! I feel like a lot of people have been doing that with Russell Westbrook for a while. They took him out again. They benched him for an overtime against the Knicks. Oh, was LeBron good in that game? He still got it, huh? Oh, he does. The Knicks were great for a half in that game. They were. They were up by like 26. Totally overwhelming for a half. <laughs> Billy, what was the funniest thing from the sports weekend? How small the NASCAR track was at the L.A. Coliseum. <laughs> Careful. The NASCAR fans do not like hearing that the track was very small. Billy. Really? I saw a lot of arguments about that on Twitter. I was not a part of it. I am a, only an F1 motorsport fan, but it was a topic of heated debate. I'm surprised that like NASCAR purists were not outraged by that. What happened with Ice Cube in NASCAR? I didn't see that. I just heard people talking about it. I think he was, I think it was promoted that he was going to perform. I saw a Pitbull performance there. Yeah. No, he did perform as well. And there was shots of, you know, people dancing that yeah. people thought were funny. Changed his name to Pit Stop. <laughs> hey. hey. Jessica, what was the funniest thing from the sports weekend? <laughs> Bobin trying to fix the rim of the game Friday night. It was just funny to watch. It didn't work. It took like 40 minutes for the game to restart. It's, down. <laughs> it's funnier when you deliver it with confidence with your hair that way. It really is. I forgot for a second. <laughs> Everything. Oh, I'm having a hard time looking at you. But you look good. <laughs> Mike Ryan, what was the funniest? <laughs> Put it on the poll, Guillermo, at Levitard Show. Can you ever say sincerely, I'm having a hard time looking at you? But you look good. But you look good. <laughs> I'm going to bring in uh, Amin for my nominee for Funniest Thing from the Sports Weekend because I've seen it a couple of times, and I'm still having trouble grasping what exactly happened in this Cavs-Hornets game. But it appeared that they gave points for a shot that missed, and it uh, I think it had an impact on the on the actual spread. What happened here, Amin? Let's get Amin's expertise on whatever it is that Mike Ryan was trying to say was the funniest thing from the sports weekend, but he it was is confused funny. by it. It is a really funny so play. It's Hornet, Hornets and Cavs, right? Kelly Oubre puts up a shot. Shot misses. Cavs player tries to rebound. He's standing out of bounds. Ref blows whistle. Out of bounds, right? You know, after a whistle, you always get players putting up BS shots afterwards. You know, it's going to practice shots, right? Terry Rhodes here catches in the corner and says, you know what? I'm going to throw one up. And one of the guys on the bench decides to mess with him. He just swipes at it. Ref says, not only is that a technical foul, but also the shot's good. Even though it was after the ball was dead. They blew it dead. The play was dead. And the ref was so adamant. He went, yeah, those arms up. He was so excited to say, you know what? I'm going to teach you a lesson not to mess with the guy when he takes practice shots. And it decided that game was decided by one point, was it not? The they, Cavs ended up winning, but it brought the game so much closer than it needed to be. Yeah, it was an I, insanely bad call. I mean, it's it's one of the worst I've ever seen. It's, <laughs> I mean, you can't – how do you get confused in that moment? That it's, it's a dead ball. Nope, I'm bringing it back to life. <laughs> like Nikki Six. <laughs> uh, Stugatz, what was the funniest thing from the sports weekend? St. Louis Billiken legend Jordaire Jett was inducted into the St. Louis Hall of Fame, Dan. He was also ejected from the game after he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. He's still playing and getting inducted into a Hall of Fame? That's crazy. Usually five years to the day, right? Juju, what was the funniest thing from the sports weekend? Howard Bryant snapping both of his... His stamps are his... It's the funniest shit of the year. <laughs> of the year. <laughs> All right. We okay. gotta we gotta find out why Howard Bryant snapped both of his hamstrings. Billy, were a lot of people telling you that you look like the new Dolphins coach? I got a couple of <laughs> tweets about it. I also saw someone say he looked like Mark Anthony. But I don't want to be six degrees away from Mark Anthony. You have to snap both of them at the same time, right? Because how do you snap the second one <laughs> if your first one's already snapped? I need details on this. All right, we got a call for the post game show. We got to call Howard Bryan and find out what's going on with his hamstrings. It begs an answer.